Hello Eternal Church, Pastor Jacob here. I am joined today by Julie Sale. Julie is with Forest Hill Fort Mill and just this weekend helped to pull off one heck of a worship service at the Greenway, so thank you. You're welcome, it was so much fun. It was really awesome. And Julie serves Forest Hill Fort Mill as the Connections Director and more recently with a new endeavor in our community called the Fort Mill Study Hall. We as a community have all been trying to look and find how can we help at a time like we're going through right now in 2020. Um, there's a lot of people that are sick, a lot of people that are hurting financially. It seems like the trouble is everywhere. We've heard from lots of people that want to know what can we do for the greater community? What can we do to help? And that's where the study hall kind of comes in. How did the study hall come to be and, and how did you guys arrive at helping this particular group of people? We discovered that the middle school students who are living in at-risk communities were really the most vulnerable of our community. So we asked the school system how could we help and really what they needed was somewhere for students to be every day. They're going to be in school every other day because of the A-B schedule, but on the days that they're home, they're going to be trying to learn at home with whatever electronic tablet or iPad that they have available to them. Sometimes be cared for by older siblings or nobody at all. There's a lot of variables that make that very hard for them. We were concerned about downward mobility, um, trafficking, teenage pregnancies, gang affiliation. There are a lot of variables for these students that can really bring them down. Yeah, that's how you found this particular need and how you guys are going to meet it, but what does the study hall look like? It's not going to be like the library. Right. Um, it's going to be a place for students to come all day long, every day. It's going to be school, essentially. Mm -hmm. So they will come at 8 o'clock in the morning, they'll leave at 3. Even if they have to stay later, we'll accommodate for that because we really want these students to be here. They will follow a school schedule, so we'll have subjects. The first couple hours will be math and science and then we'll have electives and lunch and recess time, and then we will have uh, social studies and um, English after that. That's the way we're gonna arrange the day. We're gonna give the kids snacks and lunch and let it just be a really fun time for them to, to learn and to do the um, any kind of project or paper or um, assignment that their teachers give them the day before will help them with all that. Other than having the students not fail, what's kind of the hope or the ambition of, of, of how the church can help to meet this cross-section of, of students? This is my favorite part because this is where um, the community, especially the church, can come and develop relationships with these kids, get to know who their families are, and help them, help them learn, but most of all just get to know them and help them feel heard and supported and known. I've learned through this process the schools and the teachers deeply care for these kids, so I know that they would have been in great hands had they been able to go to school every single day, um, but I am hopeful that by the end of this year, the investment that the church makes in these kids will be an even better experience because of COVID than even just a regular year. I guess that leads us to the last question, which is how would people get involved? Are there a couple things that I, I heard you say volunteers? How are you guys going to make this happen? Well, we have a sign of genius. I'm sure you'll have that on your on your website, page, yeah. your website. And my hope is that, you know, if you are if you're working for a corporation that you ask your your boss or the leadership if they will allow you to take some time mm -hmm. off in this regular fashion to invest in our community. This is something that college students can do. Um, awesome. already, I have a couple of college students that are already signed up um, because they are home learning virtually and they really want to invest in the community. That's super powerful. That's great. Also high schoolers, we have some high schoolers that are already signed up because they have a hard time finding things to do in the community that um, they, a lot of them want to volunteer. It's healthy for them. And um, there's not a lot of places to do that right now. So this is a great way to also give back. That beautiful worship service we had on Sunday was really just the beginning. We're hoping to have yes. like partnerships with the people of those churches to help the study hall. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for being here and for sharing that vision. And you heard Julie say it. If you would like to be involved, um, you can go ahead on the church website and you will find a link for the Sign Up Genius. You can go ahead and sign up there to be a volunteer. And if you are um, someone who has the means and the desire and you want to see this thing thrive, I think that there's also uh, an opportunity on the
the Sign Up Genius to indicate if you're interested in sponsorship, either individual or corporate sponsorships. Yeah, totally. Or if you want to provide lunch for the kids a day, one day a week, or there's lots of different ways that you can invest. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much, and uh, God bless you, you, and God bless this endeavor. Thank you.